It's a summer day in Northern England, and a team of inspectors are touring a beleaguered zoo. In recent years, the attraction has seen a string of disasters. Indeed, numerous animals have been met with a grisly end and has one keeper. Now though, the moment of truth has come. What exactly has been happening at South Lake's Safari Zoo? Owner David Gill has always loved animals. In fact, as a child, he became well known for his menagerie of goats, raccoons, and wallabies. In Barrow in Furness, a town in Cumbria, northwest England, he therefore became affectionately known as Dalton's Dr. Doolittle. True to his nickname, Gill went on to open his own animal attraction. In 1994, then he was awarded a license and opened South Lakes, Safari Zoo in Dalton, in Furness, a small town just a few miles from where he grew up. Over the next 22 years, moreover, the zoo grew to become home to some 1,500 animals. However, after just three years, things began to go wrong. In 1997, a white rhino named Simba somehow got out of its enclosure and into the parking lot. There tumbled into a ditch before being fatally shot by zoo staff. When the debacle was over, Gill faced a fine of £10,000 equivalent to $13,000 from local authorities. Sadly, that was just the beginning. In 2004, Gill opened Morabia Wild Animal Park and Zoo in Queensland, Australia. But after only five months, the authorities ordered it to be closed. Later in courts, Gill was charged with abusing animals in his care. Amazingly, though these charges didn't put a stop to Gill's tenure, at South Lake Safari Zoo. In fact, no sooner was he back in England than the local press were celebrating his plans to extend the park with gorillas and great apes. But unfortunately, Gil's zookeeping abilities didn't seem to have improved. In 2006, an inspector expressed concerns about security after a South American goat escaped its enclosure. Two years later, a fire claimed the leaves of 30 lemurs and the 2010 a capuchin monkey went missing for five days. On top of those incidents, a local council cautioned the zoo over poor hygiene facilities and a bizarre choice to display snakes in the food area. Despite these concerns, however, South Lake Safari Zoo remained open with local authorities repeatedly renewing Gill's license. Then in May, 2013 tragedy struck. Sarah McClay, a 24-year-old zookeeper, was fatally mauled by a Sumatran tiger named Petting. At first, McClay's devastated family were told that she had made a terrible mistake and wandered into the tiger's enclosure. However, it soon emerged that she had actually been standing in the keeper's area at the time of the attack and that Petting had entered through defective doors. Three years after McClay's death, South Lake Safari Zoo was fined 225,000 pounds. $293,027 for violating health and safety laws. However, Gill himself was not deemed personally responsible for the tragedy. Despite this ruling though, this situation at the park was beginning to unravel. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now, back to the story. In the summer of 2016, inspectors began to arrive at the zoo where they were shocked by what they found. Concerned then about the safety of both staff and the public, they advised the council not to renew Gill's license. That July, his application was therefore declined. Although a legal loophole allowed him to keep the zoo open and reapply, as the council considered Gill's new application, however, inspectors issued a report detailing the full horror of the conditions at the zoo. In it, they told how as many as 486 animals had died at the attraction between the end of 2013 and September 2016. Shockingly, this amounted to 12% of all animals present each year. The list of tragic deaths was heartbreaking to read. On one occasion, two rare snow leopard cubs were discovered dead in their enclosure having been partially devoured by other leopards. Another time, an African tortoise died of shock from electric fits. Meanwhile, birds and lemurs were killed by the zoo's miniature train, and a dead squirrel monkey was found trapped behind a heater. 
In 2016, a lone incident included a jaguar biting off its own paw following an injury, a lemur drowning, and many more deaths from either trauma or starvation. The report was clearly damning and Gill's license application was rejected in March of 2017. Sadly though, this was not the end of South Lake Safari Zoo. Instead, a new management company was appointed and the gates remained open what's more. The chief executive was one Karen Brewer, the same woman who had been in charge of the zoo alongside Gill since January of that year. But although the zoo remained open, some staff, I clearly had enough. Whistleblowers began to come forward reporting on the awful conditions there. You'd come in, in the morning and think, what's dead or escape? One insider told The Guardian in 2017, another James Potter claimed that nothing had changed under Brewer's management, and in March that same year, he went to the local council to voice his concerns. Apparently the zoo struggled to provide enough food while operating a pecking order in which the most popular animals were looked after the best. Then another ex-staff member came forward with some even more disturbing tales. According to her animals would be left to die in order to save the expense of ringing a vet, while inbreeding had left many of the zoo's inhabitants horribly deformed. Worryingly, she also claimed that Brewer had ordered them to carry out superficial cleaning tasks before each two-hour inspection. Unbelievably, Furthermore, Brewer's approach seemed to work. When the same inspectors returned to the zoo, they were apparently impressed by the improvements that new management had made. In May of 2017, then Brewer's company was granted a license to continue operating the zoo. For their part, both Brewer and Gill claimed that they have been treated unfairly. They have also said that the high animal death rate is par for the course in zoos but animal rights groups disagree and continue to campaign for the attraction's closure. Meanwhile, South Lake Safari Zoo remains open, welcoming visitors in drove. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your friends and family. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.